This is my personal message to two presidents. One president is the former president of the United States of America, George W. Bush Jr. The other is the current president of the United States of America, Barack Hussein Obama. I'm going to start with the past on this because I had some involvement with um, you know, voting for um, you know, George W. Bush Jr. and it's really troubled me all these years because I never really got to give my personal opinion or give a personal explanation uh, you know, about what I feel about this. Now, to you George W. Bush Jr., one of the greatest regrets that I have in this life was voting you into office in the first place. You know, I tried to, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a, a southern town here in um, uh, Transylvania County, Brevard, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, I grew up trying to, you know, you know, conform and please the right wing people, uh, you know, as, as I, you know, grew up in this community and um, it couldn't have been more um, you know embarrassing for me now that I look back at it um, I, I feel somewhat responsible since I voted for you the first time George although I didn't vote for you the second time because of all the atrocities that took place not only over in the Middle East but also here in the United States of America. First of all, first of all, 9/11. You know, and you can look and see the YouTube videos uh, where, you know, some pretty prestigious uh, people, some of them, you know, uh, ex-government and uh, intelligence, uh, put videos on YouTube showing. Uh, that you most likely knew about 9-11 before it ever happened, George, and that's what's most troubling about this, although I can't say for certain. It de doesn't look good, and, uh, you know, I regret having had anything to do with it, and that's the reason that I didn't vote for you the second time, because, uh, you know, I'm done trying to win points with the right wing. About the only thing that me and them agree with on his uh, Fifth Amendment rights, uh, you know, and uh, you know, aside from that, I could do without the racism and the, the ideologies first off, because this is, you know, this was originally Indian land, and uh, you know, everybody else after that, with all the broken trees and everything else, is just a bunch of imposters lying and making promises that they just can't keep. So. I just like to say that I don't believe that a human being can solve all the troubles in this world, George. And uh, you know that's a, that's one of the reasons why I feel like you know even even though you had um, a lot of success as a president, you also had a lot of failures. And that's just like anyone in life, we have success and failures. But I'm not wanting to be affiliated with anything at all political from this point on forth and I want to do everything that I can to explain myself fully in my messages in the future and now on to the current president of the United States to you Barack Hussein Obama um, I want you to personally know that I did not vote for you uh, back in, I guess it was in 2008, uh, I did not vote you uh, into, you know, you know, be the president of the United States. Uh, the reason that I didn't, Barack, the main reason, uh, is not because I didn't believe in you from the beginning. The main reason is because it left such a bad taste in my mouth what happened with George and all that, and, uh, you know the uh, the make-believe wars and the deceptions. Well, I shouldn't say make-believe wars, but I should say make-believe reasons why uh, we went to war 
um, you know, and um, why many, many, you know, innocent citizens in the Middle East lost their lives during that bombing campaign led by George W. Bush before you. Um, I didn't want to have anything else to do uh, with any um, any atrocities uh, that might happen or occur after George Bush Jr., this, you know, George Bush Jr., the second, whatever. Um, and so in the beginning, Barack, I spoke highly of you because I kind of felt like I could relate to you uh, because, you know, for different reasons, um, you know, I, I thought that you would um, be able to, uh, you know, hold um, a lot of the right-wing people who are racists and racism, uh, I thought that you would take a stronger stance against that during your pre presidency. You've done some of that. But I just don't believe, just like I told George, that a human being can solve all the problems in our world. And uh, I won't put my trust and faith and belief in a man. Because I believe that only the Spirit, only all Spirit, only all Spirit can do that. And uh, only God... Uh, can um, bring divine peace uh, to a world that is uh, basically, um, you know, struggling and, um, you know, having a whole lot of uh, confusion in its midst right now. And, and it bring me, that brings me to, the, uh, to this question. What are you going to do about what's going on in Baltimore, Maryland, you know, after what happened in Ferguson? Because over and over again, Barack, um, rogue police, uh, a lot of this uh, right-wing um, uh, police state, you know, you know, military police state-minded uh, individuals, uh, they're killing, murdering uh, minorities in their midst while they're in their custody, and that poses the greatest threat to national security here in the United States. It's at the front of the list at this point um, you know when 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 uh, when a crooked cop kills a citizen that's in their custody um, and it angers the public like it's been doing in Ferguson and like it's doing now in Baltimore Maryland uh, the public when they feel like the government is not doing its job to hold accountable across the state these different uh, police they're breaking protocol and uh, you know and, and uh, doing anything that they want to uh, the public's going to take it into its own hands and uh, there's just not enough money uh, to or or really not enough manpower or money to really fight a real war against the public who they're and it, who they're swearing they're going to protect in the constitution that they're swearing that they're going to uphold they're not upholding it and so this is where the this is where the frustration has come from and as you can see the buildings going up in smoke as they were uh, you know millions of dollars of damage happen every single time and I don't see why it's fair that these crooked cops get to kill people and then you know get to run to the National Guard to come and play their nanny you know to help protect them and keep them safe because these gangs are not trying to you know do anything to the to the public to the individuals they're angry because these police are not upholding their sworn oaths and people are dying and getting killed uh, you know and 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 the officers that are responsible for it are not getting held responsible by the government and by the the different state officials across the board so as you can see you know it should probably be it should probably be something that is put at the front of the list and uh, and holding accountable you know police that you know have this great responsibility not to keep breaking the law and causing public upset and um, they're really the ones who are causing the threat it's not the gang members not the gang members that are causing the threat but it's it's the crooked police that are doing it Brock
So this was my message. I approve of this message because it's mine. And it's what I have to say because it's what I believe about it. And if you have if you hope if you happen to see this, I hope um that you know you can do more uh th than you may be doing or more than you're not doing to see that uh you know things don't escalate and get a whole lot worse than they are or 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 you know more dead bodies laying in the streets like what happened in Ferguson and uh I'm going to end the message here.